Hello, welcome to watch Creative Proteo Mix video. Today, we are going to share some knowledge about the strategies for post-translational modifications. Post-translational modification refers to the modification that occurs on a protein after translation. There are various types of post-translational modifications, such as phosphorylation, acetylation, methylation, glycosylation, and so on. Post-translational modifications play important roles in cell biology, like cell signaling, cell structure, and DNA modification. For the analysis of protein modification, traditional strategies, like radioactive labeling and western blotting, can be specific and relatively quantitative, but they require prior knowledge of the modification type and are limited by antibody availability and specificity. Mass spectrometry is the suitable method for the analysis of protein modifications, because it can provide universal information about protein modifications without a priori knowledge and locating the sites of modification. There are several strategies for post-translational modification analysis, including bottom-up, top-down, and middle-down approaches. The bottom-up strategy for post-translational modification identification is the traditional proteomic approach. In bottom-up strategy, a protein is typically digested with an enzyme, like trypsin, into small peptides in gel or in solution. These peptides will be detected by mass spectrometer, and modification can be mapped in the recovered peptides. Bottom-up strategy has the higher sensitivity than top-down method. However, there are some intrinsic limitations in characterizing protein modifications. The first one is low percentage coverage of the protein sequence, which leads to the modification status of the unrecovered sequence portion remains unknown. In addition, the overall complexity of the sample is increased due to plentiful small peptide components by protein digestion. Moreover, the connection between modifications on disparate portions of a protein can be lost because the typical peptides from triptych digestion contain only from 5 to 20 amino acids. Top-down proteomics is becoming a powerful strategy for analysis of protein modifications. For the top-down strategy, the whole protein is directly analyzed in the mass spectrometry without digestion, so the full information of the modification state can be revealed. It can universally detect all the existing modifications including post-translational modifications and sequence variants, like mutants, alternatively spliced isoforms, and amino acid polymorphisms, simultaneously in one spectrum without a priori knowledge. In this strategy, the molecular weight of an intact protein is first measured and compares it with the calculated value based on the DNA predicted protein sequence, which can reveal modifications in the protein sequence globally. A specifically modified form of interest can be directly isolated in the mass spectrometer and subsequently fragmented by the tandem mass spectrometer for reliable mapping of the modification sites. Middle down proteomics has recently emerged as high throughput strategy to define post translational modification. The middle down approach can be considered as a variant of the top down approach. In this strategy, the proteins are needed to soft proteolysis to obtain the large peptides. The peptides are then sequenced by tandem mass spectrometry using technologies similar to top-down. For example, the middle-down strategy can be used for histone analysis, in which proteins are commonly digested into peptides in the 3 to 9 k dar range. The middle-down approaches largely preserve the combinatorial modifications of the histone tail while approaching the sensitivity of the bottom-up approach. In mass spectrometer-based post-translational modification analysis, it is important to produce peptide fragmentation information for high-confidence sequence identification and site localization of post-translational modifications. There are several fragmentation strategies available, including collision-induced dissociation, higher-energy collisional dissociation, electron capture dissociation, and electron transfer dissociation. Collision-induced dissociation, also known as collisionally activated dissociation, is the most common and widely used unimolecular dissociation method, 
in which ions collide with neutral molecules to be positively charged. The collision-induced dissociation technique is generally more effective for small and low-charge state peptides. Collision-induced dissociation is not suitable for fragmentation of intact proteins and peptides with label post-translational modifications, like phosphorylation. Higher energy collisional dissociation, known as a beam type CID, is a collision-induced dissociation technique specific to the Orbitrap mass analyzer. Compared to CID, HCD is featured with higher activation energy and shorter activation time. HCD can generate B and Y type fragment ions, while the higher energy for HCD leads to a predominance of Y ions. B ions can be further fragmented to ions or smaller species. ECD and ETD, electron-based fragmentation methods, achieve fragmentation through neutralization of backbone protonation sites with thermal electrons or radical anions. In this way, they can generate C and Z-type fragment ions without losing the post-translational modifications localization information. ECD can only be implemented on Fourier transform ion cyclotron resonance mass spectrometry instruments, while ETD can be implemented on high-resolution tandem mass spectrometer. ECD and ETD perform better with highly charged state analytes, while CID is more efficient with low-charge state peptides. However, ECD and ETD are more suitable for detecting unstable post-translational modifications, for the reason that peptide backbone fragmentation is virtually independent of the amino acid sequence, neutral losses are reduced, and Ogolknak elimination does not happen. With years experience in advanced experiment equipment, Creative proteomics can provide a variety of post-translational modification services to assist your scientific research. We can provide phosphorylation analysis, glycosylation analysis, methylation analysis, acetylation analysis, ubiquitination analysis, and nitrosylation analysis. Thanks for watching our video. At Creative Proteomics, we provide the most reliable services. If you have any questions or specific requirements, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are very glad to cooperate with you.